It's an unspoken rule of science fiction that evil always has style. Star Wars is no exception. The Dark Lords of the Sith and the Ancient Sith in particular always made sure they looked cool no matter whether they were rocking simple black cloaks or ostentatious gold-plated alchemically enhanced battle armor. The Jedi, based though they were, simply couldn't compete with the sheer aesthetic power of their dark side counterparts. But who was the best of the best? Which Sith Lord had the best drip? In this 100% fact-based, completely scientific video, we'll be answering that question. Attention, Sergeant on deck! We're going to be dividing the Sith into tiers for this video. You probably know how this works by now. The Sith with the comparatively least stylish outfits will end up in C tier, those with better outfits will end up in B tier, the more aesthetic Sith Lords will get A tier, and the Dark Lords of the Drip will get S tier. Let's start off with C tier. At the bottom of the Sith Drip hierarchy, we have the basic Sith outfit, the black cloak and robes. Famously used by one Darth Sidious, this was the go-to style for many, many Sith Lords over the millennia, including Darth Plagueis, Darth Xana, one incarnation of Darth Vishit, Darth Treya, Darth Nihilus, and Darth Ruin. Darth Maul also made use of this outfit, though he gets placed at the top of C tier due to those badass tattoos. Now on to B tier, where the real fun begins. This tier is for those Sith who surpassed the basic Sith outfit, but not to an extreme extent. Starting out, we have another movie Sith, Darth Tyrannus. Darth Tyrannus understood style, as made clear by his preference for fine capes. His outfit was simple, but he wore it well. The same can be said for two much older Sith Lords, Exar Kun and Ulic Keldroma. Kun and Keldroma, like Dooku, were ex-Jedi, but unlike Dooku, they actually didn't change their outfits all that much after they fell to the dark side, aside from adopting Sith gauntlets and a few other bits of armor plating. Exar Kun's outfit of choice was essentially a more elaborate version of the standard Sith robes, just with armoring here and there, while Keldroma looks like you would expect a dark Jedi to look. His cloak and armor were similar to those worn by Jedi of his era, but darker in style, which suited him rather well. We're going to put the most prominent of the new Sith in B tier as well, Skera Khan, Kasim, and Githany. Khan and Kasim's outfits were derived from the generic Sith pattern, but were unique in a manner that lends a bit more force to their presentation. Both men wore armor over their robes and branded their gear with their personal emblems, which gave them the air of medieval lords. Githany took that a step further. Her armor seems far too tight, impossible to maneuver in, and extraordinarily uncomfortable, but she definitely looks the part of a dark knight, exuding confidence and power. Her getup was impractical but cool looking, which, considering her preference for the light whip, seems to have been a common theme. Rounding out beats here, we have the first of the armored Sith Lords, Valkorion, also known as Darth Vitiate's other body. Valkorion looked cool, and with his white and gold armor, his style contrasted sharply with those of most Sith. However, he doesn't quite have the flair of the A tier Sith, so we're sticking him down here in B tier. It's in A tier where we have some of the most aesthetic Sith Lords starting with the most famous Sith Lord of all. Darth Vader had perhaps the most well-known outfit in the Star Wars universe. His black armor, flowing cape, and iconic death mask defined the aesthetic of evil for an entire generation and struck fear into the heart of any enemy of the Sith. Many Sith Lords donned similar looking black armor, clearly designed in Vader's image. Among them were Darth Malgus, Darth Ma, and Tulak Horde, all of whom had different takes on the whole armored Sith Lord thing. All four Sith Lords were absolutely iconic in their own way. Speaking of Sith who are iconic in their own way, let's talk about Darth Bane for a moment. For 10 years of his life, Darth Bane wore a colony of obelisks as armor, small insect-like creatures whose shells were lightsaber resistant. Obelisks were symbiotes. They latched onto Bane while he was investigating the tomb of Freedon Nad, forming an impregnable organic suit of armor that covered pretty much his entire body. The only place Bane wasn't armored with obelisks was his head, as he wore this weird looking golden cage that prevented the creatures from spreading up his neck. This outfit is absolutely hideous. We give it a 10 out of 10. Next up, we have Darth Sion. 
Cyan's outfit spoke for itself. It was like the basic Sith outfit, though he wore far less of it. Cyan's clothing is best described much like the Lord of Pain himself. So edgy, you could cut yourself on it. Cyan was a man with many scars, and he was seemingly eager to show as many of them off as possible. But what really completes Cyan's outfit is the single shoulder-length spiked glove he wore. It has no practical purpose whatsoever, it almost looks silly, and it's perfect A-tier material. Continuing on with A-tier, we have two of our favourite Sith Lords, Darth Revan and Darth Malak. Malak's outfit is unique but undeniably Sithy, while Revan's armour and cloak make him look like an even cooler version of Darth Vader. Revan in particular looks absolutely awesome, especially his mask. The combination of the Mandalorian mask with an otherwise traditional Sith aesthetic just goes hard. Finishing off A tier, we have Darth Vishit's original form. We honestly have no idea why Vishit ditched this aesthetic. It beats the white armor or the classic black robes any day. After all the Sith Lords we put in A tier, you might be wondering which Sith garments could possibly be more aesthetic. Our answer to that would be the ostentatious, utterly ridiculous outfits worn by the lords of the first Sith Empire. Let's start with Marka Ragnos. Ragnos was a man who truly looked like a lord instead of a sorcerer or dark knight. The elaborate headdress, extravagant robes, and ornamental chains made Ragnos look like the conqueror king he was, one of the most powerful and cunning of the ancient Sith. But even Marka Ragnos is second to his successors, the two Sith with the best drip of all. We're talking, of course, about perpetual rivals Naga Sadao and Ludo Kret. Like Marka Ragnos, they wore highly ornate armor and robes, but their gear was even more elaborate than Ragnos's. Kresh wore huge, gilded pauldrons covered in runes and a headdress with a bat-like creature as its crest, giving him an absolutely ridiculous silhouette. Naga Sadao, on the other hand, wore a sort of gilded scale armor decorated with what looks to be gemstones. Sadao also had a large eye emblazoned on his chest plate for reasons unknown. The eye wasn't his personal symbol, nor was it a symbol of the Sith Empire or of any particular importance in Sith culture. As far as we can tell, it was purely an aesthetic choice on Sadao's part. But now we've come to the hardest question of all. Did Naga Sadao or Ludo Kresh have the better drip? Well, Naga Sadao may have been the rightful Dark Lord of the Sith, but we dare say that Ludo Kresh was the Dark Lord of the Drip. It's the absurdly elaborate pauldrons and headdress that do it for us. You just can't top it. That was our answer to the most important question of our time. But what do you think? Would you rank the Drip of the Dark Side differently? Feel free to criticize our aesthetic tastes and post your thoughts in the comments section below. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.